It's a new week. Uh, getting back into the business of putting this airplane together. Uh, getting things back to normal. You can see behind me, we've taken the cowls off and got access to the rest of it. It was just kind of for show. It was great, really dramatic compared to the other side. But so today's task, what I just did, Okay, now that the airplane has stopped running, I'll show you what I've been doing. These two cables right here are the connection for the rudder ca cables from the co-pilot side to the rest of the airplane. And I just, we just tensioned them and I safety wired them. And the other thing that we're doing, let me walk over here to the bench. One of the things that we need to do before we want to put the nose on is finish populating the instrument panel. So we're going to be starting to check instruments and seeing what works, what doesn't work, and see if we can get them installed. We're going to do some testing uh, just to make sure of the instrument integrity, but we'll see when we can get these installed and go on with the next step. I'm sitting here with Dave starting to go through the instruments, doing the tests that we can test here. Let me show you what we're doing. Hold on. So we have this special pedostatic test system. We've got our instrument, our first one here, that we're testing to make sure that it, this altimeter, this altimeter reads the same as this altimeter. So we'll... These are pretty prone if the barrel is... Uh... C zero three two. Let's put a filled altitude. That's uh, let's put forty five. That's a little above filled altitude. Okay. Three zero two. This is three zero two. It's coming in pretty close. Okay. I think you get plus or minus twenty feet, but this is just a test to make sure that they're not leaking internally and um, see if they just see how they work here. So we turn this on and. See what happens. All right. Whoop. See, that's what you don't do. Okay, we're at six. We'll climb up now. Our VSI is at 25. We're coming up real nice, smooth, and they're really quite close. And the barrel's the same at three zero. Two zero on both of them. You want to hold that right down there by that one? Hold it by this one? Yeah, that way I can film them at the same time. So, yeah. We'll go up 10,000 feet and see what it does. We're over here around 2,000 foot right up. So, before we get too carried away with putting instruments in the aircraft. We want to try to ensure that they're worth putting in there. And these are looking, that one's looking really good. I think this is the closest one we've had so far. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Cruising through 9,000 feet. The oxygen is starting to get a little thin up here. <laughs> yeah, that thing is operating brilliantly. Ten thousand feet, just almost right on the money. Okay, we're gonna hold it here and let it come down to ten and do a leak check on it. Okay. And both of them are holding really good. VSI is coming back to zero. Okay. They're close to valves. We'll see what happens there. Wow, that looks great. Now we're going to bring it back to uh, fill elevation here at Provo. 
We can't just open the valves because this thing will wind down so fast it could damage the uh, altimeters. So we're going to induce a little bit of a leak right here. And we'll just let it come down slowly. You know, static tests are really pretty boring because you can't, uh, just can't undo these lines. So we're hoping we can, uh, before we do our actual pedostatic test, we'll hopefully test the whole system out to make sure it's tight. And then we'll get the calibrated test unit on here and, uh, and complete the, the pedostatic test. Both of them are reacting the same, so it's not yeah. like it's uh, not like it's dry in there. It's just ratcheting down a little bit, probably mostly because you don't have a little thumper on here to keep the to keep the needles coming down together. Yeah, but you're happy with what you're seeing there. On this one, it's really good. Yeah, I don't think there's a ten foot split. I think I don't remember for sure. I think you have twenty feet split. Okay, you remember that? I don't. That's you couldn't ask for any better than that. That's a good instrument. Try and increase the leak. Yeah, we're really falling out of the air 2,000 foot a minute. Twenty five hundred. And we'll seem to be doing exactly the same thing. So I think this altimeter would be a captain's because it okay. uh, seemed to be functioning very nicely. And it's uh, following the, mm -hmm. the test unit. Yep. Well, we got back down here into breathable air again. Yeah. <laughs> you can't afford to stay up in that high altitude very long there, Bob. No, I know that. <laughs> Give me back on the ground. <laughs> We're almost to the bottom here. Our vertical speed, our vertical speed is changing as we get closer to atmosphere here. Got about five hundred foot more to go. Yeah, these are beautiful. We got Jan over in other part of the shop he's doing some fabrication we're so close to being static no pressure I, I think that's a winner yeah on this airplane the uh there's a little vibrating on some airplanes because it kind of thumps us a little bit and keeps it going because the needles will stick a little bit. Yeah. But on this airplane, we've got uh, two big vibrators, one on each wing. So we yeah. don't have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, there you are, on the ground. Okay, we're going to call that a win for the first one. We'll go through and see what other instruments we can... Uh, get tested out and see if they work and and uh maybe we can get our dashboard populated start getting it plumbed and and wired and whatever else it is we have to do so uh stand by well a little departure from working on the instruments uh, we've been going over to see what hardware we need in the wheel wells to finish up all of the attachments uh, let me turn this around so we're making sure that we've got all the correct hardware and that the cotter pins are are completely done so like for instance here we've got to do this cotter pin uh, and this one and we have this was a temporary bolt we need to get that changed out for the correct hardware uh, we haven't even put a cotter pin in here but so jan was in here and trying to figure out what we needed and uh, discovered that we have a leaky tube on our belly door uh, hydraulic system. You can see the red there. So 
I've already, I've drained out the reservoir. So now I need to get that tube out of there and see what we do, need to do to rectify this leak. So stand by. All right, I'm hoping I can, you guys can see what I'm doing here and see how it's all wet right here and it's wet up here. So I'm gonna take this tube out and we're gonna see if we got a bad flare. But we gotta get it out to find out. So let's get this done. Just when you think you have everything done, then you have a problem. Okay. Try not to make a mess with oil everywhere. All right. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we can't really, uh, let's see if I can get this where you guys can see it. Can't really see anything wrong with this flare. Looking at the uh, flares on the adapters in there, they look fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a, uh, a a seal, essentially for flares, a conical seal. So we'll get this back installed, and with this conical seal, if I can get this on, one-handed sucks. All right. So hopefully you can see that. Basically, it's just basically a piece of metal that's been fashioned into the same degree and size as a tube flare. So we'll get this installed and hopefully that'll solve our leak. So stand by. Alright, so here's this conical seal. I'm going to go ahead and install this. It appears that it was the top one that was leaking and everything was running downhill. All right, the conical seal's in, so we've uh, verified everything else we can verify, so I'll get this tube installed here. fill the reservoir and we'll give it a test and see what happens. So they're uh, really going crazy on these hangers. They're pouring a bunch of uh, gravel in the bottom of this one and they're using a fancy machine to do it. That's pretty cool. And then down here on this one Looks like they're getting the forms all formed up so they can pour a foundation wall. Anyway, let's get back to putting some fluid in that reservoir. So, in the process of putting this airplane back together again, it, it arrived, like I've said in the past, on five flatbed trailers. So we have all kinds of catalogs and, and so on and so forth. Uh, parts books, uh, manuals on how to put things together, uh, but one of the things we have access to is an outfit called Air Corps Library. They have 
there must be 3,000 drawings on the A26. We have microfiche, and uh, some time ago, one of our friends gave us a file cabinet of drawings. But they're both semi-complete. Air Corps Library is a place that you can go on and you can, uh, if you know what keywords you want to look for, you can go th through the drawings and and possibly find what you're after. And we have done that so much, and I really appreciate Air Corps Library. One of the things I discovered when I was looking at some of the drawings on Air Corps Library was that, I don't know if you remember this, but I found this drawing for a funnel that's created specifically to fill the reservoir in the uh, up in the cockpit so that there's this, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's this little flange back there that kind of hangs on to the window frame and it's bent in just such a way to fit that big reservoir up in the front of the airplane. So anyway, I'm going to uh, use that to fill the reservoir and try not to make a great big mess. So stand by. I'm not left-handed, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. It takes pretty close to a gallon of fluid to fill this thing. Alrighty, that's got that, so we'll get this funnel out of here. That worked great. Get this funnel out of here and then we'll do a test and see if we can not have any more leaks. So hold on. All right, folks, here's the critical point. Uh, I'm going to go have Jan run the door, and you guys let me know if this pops a leak. So stand by. I guess before we can do anything, I have to hook up the battery and turn on the, the power so we can run the door. So, okay. All right, we've got power. Stand by. So we can't test. <laughs> well, uh, scratch that test. Uh, our pump is disconnected because uh, John, one of our Sparkies, was doing some work, and we're gonna. And he's out of town today, so hopefully Monday we can run a test. So we'll catch you on the next episode. 
So a couple of weeks ago, you saw I played 50,000 piece pickup with upholstery stuff. Well, so since we've been doing getting the screws down on the wings, we've uh, accumulated a bunch of screws. Sorry about the construction noise, it's across the taxiway. But anyway, we've accumulated a bunch of screws and I'm trying to decipher them. So, laying them out, we just try not to waste anything around here and go into the book and figuring out the length of the screws and marking them so that I can get them sorted out and segregated so that when we need that particular size again, we'll be able to just go to the bin and get it. I'm not even gonna film this, it's way boring. Uh, but just one of those things that's got to be done around here. So uh, stand by, I'll be back.